a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Christopher Columbus Christopher Columbus was an Italian explorer, navigator, and colonist who completed four voyages across the Atlantic Ocean under the auspices of the Catholic monarchs of Spain. He led the first European expeditions to the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, initiating the permanent European colonization of the Americas. Columbus' early life is somewhat obscure, but scholars generally agree that he was born in the Republic of Genoa and spoke a dialect of Ligurian as his first language. He went to sea at a young age and traveled widely, as far north as the British Isles, and as far south as what is now Ghana. He married a Portuguese woman and was based in Lisbon for several years, but later took a Spanish mistress. He had one son with each woman, though largely self-educated. Columbus was widely read in geography, astronomy, and history. He formulated a plan to seek a western sea passage to the East Indies, hoping to profit from the lucrative spice trade. After years of lobbying, the Catholic monarchs of Spain agreed to sponsor a journey west, in the name of the Crown of Castile. Columbus left Spain in August 1492 with three ships, and after a stopover in the Canary Islands made landfall in the Americas on 12 October. His landing place was an island in the Bahamas, known by its native inhabitants as Guanaani. Its exact location is uncertain. Columbus subsequently visited Cuba and Hispaniola, establishing a colony in what is now Haiti the first European settlement in the Americas since the Norse colonies almost 500 years earlier. He arrived back in Spain in early 1493, bringing a number of captive natives with him. Word of his discoveries soon spread throughout Europe. Columbus would make three further voyages to the New World. Exploring the Lesser Antilles in 1493, Trinidad and the northern coast of South America in 1498, and the eastern coast of Central America in 1502. Many of the names he gave to geographical features particularly islands are still in use. He continued to seek a passage to the East Indies, and the extent to which he was aware that the Americas were a wholly separate landmass is uncertain. He gave the name Indios to the indigenous peoples he encountered. Columbus strained relationship with the Spanish crown, and its appointed colonial administrators in America led to his arrest and removal from Hispaniola in 1500, and later to protracted litigation over the benefits that he and his heirs claimed were owed to them by the Crown. Columbus' expeditions inaugurated a period of exploration, conquest, and colonization that lasted for centuries, helping create the modern Western world. The transfers between the Old World, and New World that followed his first voyage are known as the Columbian Exchange, and the period of human habitation in the Americas prior to his arrival is known as the Pre-Columbian Era. Columbus' legacy continues to be debated. He was widely venerated in the centuries after his death, but public perceptions have changed as recent scholars have given attention to negative aspects of his life, such as his role in the extinction of the Taino people, his promotion of slavery, and allegations of tyranny towards Spanish colonists. Many landmarks and institutions in the Western Hemisphere bear his name, including the country of Colombia. Early Life The name Christopher Columbus is the anglicization of the Latin Christophoros Columbus. His name in Ligurian is Christopher Combo, in Italian Cristoforo Columbo and in Spanish Cristobal Colón. He was born before the 31st of October 1451 in the territory of the Republic of Genoa, though the exact location remains disputed. His father was Domenico Colombo, a middle-class wool weaver who worked both in Genoa and Savona, and who also owned a cheese stand at which young Christopher worked as a helper. His mother was Susanna Fontana Rossa, Bartolomeo, Giovanni Pellegrino, and Giacomo were his brothers. Bartolomeo worked in a cartography workshop in Lisbon for at least part of his adulthood. He also had a sister named Bianca Netta, 
Columbus never wrote in his native language, which is presumed to have been a Genoese variety of Ligurian. In one of his writings, he says he went to sea at the age of 10. In 1470, the Columbus family moved to Savona, where Domenico took over a tavern. In the same year, Christopher was on a Genoese ship hired in the service of René of Anjou to support his attempt to conquer the Kingdom of Naples. Some modern historians have argued that he was not from Genoa but, instead, from the Aragon region of Spain or from Portugal. These competing hypotheses have generally been discounted by mainstream scholars. In 1473, Columbus began his apprenticeship as business agent for the important Centurione, Di Negro and Spinola families of Genoa. Later, he allegedly made a trip to Chios, an Aegean island then ruled by Genoa, in May 1476. He took part in an armed convoy sent by Genoa to carry valuable cargo to northern Europe. He docked in Bristol, England, and Galway, Ireland. In 1477, he was possibly in Iceland. In the autumn of 1477, he sailed on a Portuguese ship from Galway to Lisbon, where he found his brother Bartolomeo, and they continued trading for the Centurione family. Columbus spaced himself in Lisbon from 1477 to 1485. He married Filippa Muniz Perestrello, daughter of the Porto Santo governor and Portuguese nobleman of Lombard origin Bartolomeo Perestrello. In 1479 or 1480, his son Diego Columbus was born. Between 1482 and 1485, Columbus traded along the coasts of West Africa, reaching the Portuguese trading post of Ilmina at the Guinea coast. Some records report that Philippa died sometime around 1485, while Columbus was away in Castile. He returned to Portugal to settle her estate and take his son Diego with him. He had left Portugal for Castile in 1485, where he found a mistress in 1487, a 20-year-old orphan named Beatriz Enriquez de Aranha. It is likely that Beatriz met Columbus when he was in Cordoba, a gathering site of many Genoese merchants and where the court of the Catholic monarchs was located at intervals. Beatriz, unmarried at the time, gave birth to Columbus' natural son Fernando Columbus in July 1488, named for the monarch of Aragon. Columbus recognized the boy as his offspring. Columbus entrusted his older, legitimate son Diego to take care of Beatrice and pay the pension set aside for her following his death, but Diego was negligent in his duties. Ambitious, Columbus eventually learned Latin, Portuguese, and Castilian. He read widely about astronomy, geography, and history, including the works of Claudius Ptolemy, Cardinal Pierre de Lis Amigo Mundi, the travels of Marco Polo and Sir John Mandeville, Pliny's Natural History, and Pope Pius II's Historia Rerumubi Quae Gestarum. According to historian Edmund Morgan, throughout his life, Columbus also showed a keen interest in the Bible and in biblical prophecies, often quoting biblical texts in his letters and logs. For example, part of the argument that he submitted to the Spanish Catholic monarchs when he sought their support for his proposed expedition to reach the Indies by sailing west was based on his reading of the second book of Esdras, c. 2nd Esdras 642 which he took to mean that the earth is made of six parts of land to one of water. Towards the end of his life, he produced a book of prophecies in which his career as an explorer is interpreted in the light of Christian eschatology and of apocalypticism. Background Under the Mongol Empire's hegemony over Asia, Europeans had long enjoyed a safe land passage, the Silk Road, to the Indies and China which were sources of valuable goods such as spices and silk. With the fall of Constantinople to the Ottoman Turks in 1453, the land route to Asia became much more difficult and dangerous. Portuguese navigators tried to find a seaway to Asia. In 1470, 
The Florentine astronomer Paolo del Porto Toscanelli suggested to King Afonso V of Portugal that sailing west would be a quicker way to reach the Spice Islands, Cathay, and Sepang than the route around Africa. Afonso rejected his proposal. Portuguese explorers, under the leadership of King John II, then developed the Cape route to Asia around Africa. Major progress in this quest was achieved in 1488, when Bartolomeu Diaz reached the Cape of Good Hope, in what is now South Africa. Meanwhile, in the 1480s, the Columbus brothers had picked up Toscanella's suggestion and proposed a plan to reach the Indies by sailing west across the Ocean Sea, i.e. the Atlantic. However, Diaz's discovery had shifted the interests of Portuguese seafaring to the Southeast Passage, which complicated Columbus' proposals significantly. Geographical Considerations Washington Irving's 1828 biography of Columbus popularized the idea that Columbus had difficulty obtaining support for his plan, because many Catholic theologians insisted that the Earth was flat. In fact, nearly all educated Westerners had understood, at least since the time of Aristotle, that the Earth is spherical. The sphericity of the Earth is also accounted for in the work of Ptolemy on which medieval astronomy was largely based. Christian writers whose works clearly reflect the conviction that the Earth is spherical include Saint Bede the Venerable in his Reckoning of Time, written around AD 723. In Columbus' time, the techniques of celestial navigation, which use the position of the sun and the stars in the sky, together with the understanding that the Earth is a sphere, had long been in use by astronomers and were beginning to be implemented by mariners. As far back as the 3rd century BC, Eratosthenes had correctly computed the circumference of the Earth by using simple geometry and studying the shadows cast by objects at two different locations, Alexandria and Syene. Eratosthenes' results were confirmed by a comparison of stellar observations at Alexandria and Rhodes carried out by Posidonius in the 1st century BC. These measurements were widely known among scholars, but confusion about the old-fashioned units of distance in which they were expressed had led, in Columbus Day, to some debate about the exact size of the Earth. From Daly's Amigo Mundi Columbus learned of Alfregonus' estimate that a degree of latitude spanned 56 and two-thirds miles but did not realize that this was expressed in the Arabic mile rather than the shorter Roman mile with which he was familiar. He therefore estimated the circumference of the Earth to be about 30,200 kilometers, whereas the correct value is 40,000 kilometers. Furthermore, most scholars accepted Ptolemy's estimate that Eurasia spanned 180 degrees longitude, rather than the actual 130 degrees or 150 degrees. Columbus, for his part, believed the even higher estimate of Marinus of Tyre, which put the longitudinal span of the Eurasian landmass at 225 degrees, leaving only 135 degrees of water. He also believed that Japan was much larger, farther to the east from China, and closer to the equator than it is and that there were inhabited islands even farther to the east than Japan, including the mythical Antilia, which he thought might lie not much farther to the west than the Azores. In this, he was influenced by the ideas of Florentine astronomer, Paolo del Porzo Toscanelli, who corresponded with Columbus in 1474, and who also defended the feasibility of a westward route to Asia. Columbus therefore estimated the distance from the Canary Islands to Japan to be about 3,000 Italian miles. The true figure is now known to be vastly larger, about 20,000 kilometers. No ship in the 15th century could have carried enough food and fresh water for such a long voyage. And the dangers involved in navigating through the uncharted ocean would have been formidable. Most European navigators reasonably concluded that a westward voyage from Europe to Asia was unfeasible. The Catholic monarchs, however, having completed an expensive war in the Iberian Peninsula, were eager to obtain a competitive edge over other European countries in the quest for trade with the Indies. Columbus' project, 
though far-fetched, held the promise of such an advantage. Nautical considerations Though Columbus was wrong about the number of degrees of longitude that separated Europe from the Far East and about the distance that each degree represented, he did possess valuable knowledge about the trade winds, which would prove to be the key to his successful navigation of the Atlantic Ocean. During his first voyage in 1492, the brisk trade winds from the east, commonly called Easterlies, propelled Columbus' fleet for five weeks, from the Canary Islands to the Bahamas. The precise first land sighting and landing point was San Salvador Island. To return to Spain against this prevailing wind would have required several months of an arduous sailing technique, called beating, during which food and drinkable water would probably have been exhausted. Instead, Columbus returned home by following the curving trade winds northeastward to the middle latitudes of the North Atlantic, where he was able to catch the westerlies that blow eastward to the coast of Western Europe. There, in turn, the winds curve southward towards the Iberian Peninsula. It is unclear whether Columbus learned about the winds from his own sailing experience or if he had heard about them from others. The corresponding technique for efficient travel in the Atlantic appears to have been exploited first by the Portuguese, who referred to it as the Volta do March Columbus' knowledge of the Atlantic wind patterns was, however, imperfect at the time of his first voyage. By sailing directly due west from the Canary Islands during hurricane season, skirting the so-called horse latitudes of the mid-Atlantic, Columbus risked either being becalmed or running into a tropical cyclone, both of which, by chance, he avoided. Quest for financial support for a voyage In 1485, Columbus presented his plans to King John II of Portugal. He proposed that the king equip three sturdy ships and grant Columbus one year's time to sail out into the Atlantic, search for a western route to the Orient, and return. Columbus also requested he be made great admiral of the ocean, appointed governor of any and all lands he discovered, and given one-tenth of all revenue from those lands. The king submitted Columbus' proposal to his experts, who rejected it. It was their considered opinion that Columbus' estimation of a travel distance of 2,400 miles was, in fact, far too low. In 1488, Columbus again appealed to the court of Portugal, resulting in John II again inviting him for an audience. That meeting also proved unsuccessful, in part, because not long afterwards Bartolomeu Diaz returned to Portugal with news of his successful rounding of the southern tip of Africa, with an eastern sea route to Asia apparently at hand. King John was no longer interested in Columbus' far-fetched project. Columbus travelled from Portugal to both Genoa and Venice, but he received encouragement from neither. He had also dispatched his brother Bartholomew to the court of Henry VII of England to inquire whether the English crown might sponsor his expedition, but also without success. Columbus had sought an audience from the monarchs Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile, who had united several kingdoms in the Iberian Peninsula by marrying and were ruling together. On 1 May 1486, permission having been granted, Columbus presented his plans to Queen Isabella, who, in turn, referred it to a committee. After the passing of much time, the savants of Spain, like their counterparts in Portugal, replied that Columbus had grossly underestimated the distance to Asia. They pronounced the idea impractical and advised their royal highnesses to pass on the proposed venture. However, to keep Columbus from taking his ideas elsewhere, and perhaps to keep their options open, the Catholic monarchs gave him an annual allowance of 12,000 Maravedis and, in 1489, furnished him with a letter ordering all cities and towns under their domain to provide him food and lodging at no cost. Agreement with the Spanish Crown After continually lobbying at the Spanish court and two years of negotiations, he finally had success in January 1492. Ferdinand and Isabella had just conquered Granada, the last Muslim stronghold on the Iberian Peninsula, and they received Columbus in Cordoba, 
in the Alcazar castle. Isabella turned him down on the advice of her confessor. Columbus was leaving town by mule in despair when Ferdinand intervened. Isabella then sent a royal guard to fetch him, and Ferdinand later claimed credit for being the principal cause why those islands were discovered. In the April 1492 capitulations of Santa Fe, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella promised Columbus that if he succeeded he would be given the rank of Admiral of the Ocean Sea and appointed Viceroy and Governor of all the new lands he could claim for Spain. He had the right to nominate three persons, from whom the sovereigns would choose one, for any office in the new lands. He would be entitled to 10% of all the revenues from the new lands in perpetuity. Additionally, he would also have the option of buying one-eighth interest in any commercial venture with the new lands, and receive one-eighth of the profits. Columbus was later arrested in 1500 and dismissed from his posts. He and his sons, Diego and Fernando, then conducted a lengthy series of court cases against the Castilian crown, known as the Pleiatos Columbinos, alleging that the crown had illegally reneged on its contractual obligations to Columbus and his heirs. The Columbus family had some success in their first litigation. As a judgment of 1,511 confirmed Diego's position as viceroy, but reduced his powers. Diego resumed litigation in 1512, which lasted until 1536, and further disputes continued until 1790. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?